Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for taking your lunch hour. Whenever and wherever you are, thank you for joining us for another Lajiwa Quick Take webinar. A small investment in your time with a big payoff in knowledge for you. And we are thrilled uh, to have with us again, for those who are regular viewers of our series, um, my friend, my colleague, one of the leading experts in, in all things warehousing, Delect has a food glue. So Delect, thank you for joining us again to share your expertise um, today. And, uh, and the topic um, that we will be covering during this quick take, smart inventory management for that high volume direct to consumer fulfillment. So uh, without any further ado, as we are Promise, uh, promising a small investment in time. Let's get started, Delight. Are you ready? Yep. Hi, Wayne. We, thank you for having here me. We. I'm very excited to be here and like working with the marketing department and talking about some helpful stuff for everyone that who is watching us today. So yes, today we will be talking about the smart inventory management. And again, uh, as you guys know, the previous webinar, we did the same thing. Wayne really likes to put up like and make up quotes for me. <laughs> and one of them is right here. It's about the peak season. So do you know where your SKUs are? Why do we say this? Because the warehouse operations or actually, let me say successful warehouse operations actually like going to be like inventory management, successful inventory management. So it's very important to know like where your items are, like what is coming in and going out of your warehouse. So that's why today we're going to be focusing on three key points defining how you can better manage your inventory. And on the next slide, we will see our three points. <laughs> Thank you. So first of them would be starting off right at the receiving process, and then we will be talking about the smart put away algorithms. And lastly, we will be uh, talking about how you can pick the right counting method for your warehouse. And moving to the next slide about the receiving operation, why it is so important because you actually are defining what comes into your warehouse, what is the quantity, like in what form it's coming. And then after that point, that would create your reality in the in, on the inventory levels in your warehouse. So it is very important to know like what type of receiving you are going to be doing. So you might be receiving directly on the floor by counting your units. You might be receiving with pallets where actually you will be uh, using some pallet IDs or license plate IDs, or maybe for, your, some, for some of your customers, you might be directly receiving to the racks. So deciding and like creating that flow with the receiving, like uh, it's very critical because by that you will be able to have an accurate inventory level and accurate receiving records. Then in some scenarios or for some customers, you might be uh, like expecting and knowing what you will be receiving. And in that scenario, you might need a system where actually you will be able to uh, compare afterwards what you were expecting and what you actually received. Or the other uh, like, basically opposite to this is the blind receiving. So if you uh, have scenarios or if your vendors are sending you some inventory without you knowing it beforehand, basically doing a blind receiving, then you also need to be able to like receive any item at any quantity uh, to be able to manage these inventory operations. Also, a very critical point is actually the damaged goods. So for example, you are counting your uh, cases, your cartons, and then you come across a carton that actually is damaged and needs to go to QC because that might not go to the customer, it is damaged. So it is very critical to uh, tag it at that point that this inventory is damaged. You can still continue receiving, but maybe adding a tag to the inventory or maybe putting it or receiving it to a different location, it's going to help you to uh, make sure that these damaged goods will go to their designated area in the inventory and they won't be like being shipped out or picked to for shipping to the customers. And lastly, this like maintaining the visibility and the control over these receiving processes, uh, it is going to be very critical and it can be managed in different ways. Like 
uh, in the example I explained with expected or blind received, you can uh, have a control over them by saying that for some scenarios, I want to be able to only get a warning message and then move forward with my receiving. Or for some other scenarios, you might say, I don't want the system to allow to receive anything different than what's expected. Because also, whatever your clients or customers ask you, that's also important. So we can move to the next slide to our next topic. Thank you. And now we're going to be talking about the smart put away algorithms. So as Lajiwa, like we always say that even though most people, most like warehouses, like organizations think that the picking process, it's the most important process in the warehouse, we strongly disagree. Because the put away process, it's so important that if you put your items away to the correct places, then the picking process would be also smooth. You won't have problem with the picking. That's why directing the put away, directing the put away operations uh, and showing you and suggesting you some locations, it is going to be a very key point to your warehouse inventory management. And some of the logics or some of the algorithms uh, you can see here in bullet points, one of them is the ABC analysis. So you can separate your warehouse by slow moving goods and fast moving goods. And by that way, if your uh, smart put away algorithm takes into consideration this logic, it will suggest you to put the slow moving items together and the fast moving items together. And for example, you don't wanna put a fast moving item back in the warehouse. It should be somewhere that is going to be closer to the packing stations or designated locations or designated location groups and zones. If you have some specific areas that you designated for some items or for some customers, you can also use an algorithm that will tell you that, okay, this item belongs to customer A, so it needs to go to this location group. And another key algorithm can be a package capacity or a pallet capacity. Let's say you are storing pallets in your warehouse. If you have only space for one pallet at a location, of course, you don't want the system to suggest you to put a second pallet there. So that's why you can use the capacities of each location can get one pallet or maybe 10 cases. And according to that, the system will direct you to put those items in a more sufficient way. Lastly, of course, these ones that I talked about so far are the most common ones, but there can be always more configured and like more unique uh, algorithms that you can use. Like in the image on the right hand side, this is a double deep racking, uh, actually an algorithm that I worked on like a year ago. And basically uh, the logic that we created with the algorithm was that if you have a specific SKU in the backside of the double rack, then you should put the same SKU in front. Or of course, if their uh, backside is empty, you don't want the system to suggest you a, a front location. That's why like building these algorithms, like configuring them for your own needs will help you efficiently to manage your inventory. And we can move to the next slide. And lastly, our third uh, takeaway today would be basically um, the counting methods, choosing the right counting method for your operations. And specifically, we are talking about the instant counting and the cycle counting. So the instant counting is actually like one and done type of counting where you just go to a location, you count it, you update your inventory, and you're done. But however, the cycle counting, it depends more on the plan. So you need to plan it ahead of time to be able to uh, make an efficient count. And how, like what examples can we give to those would be for some exceptional scenarios. Let's say that you're racking like shelves just like crash down and everything is on the floor. You are just going to put them back, but you're not sure if like the items are correct or if the quantities are correct. So with an instant counting, you can just go that door, go there, scan the location, count your items and just update your inventory and make sure that your inventory levels are correct. Or for the cycle counting example, I can give you the annual counts. So we shut down or basically like most of the places I've seen so far shut down the warehouse for a few days every year just to do like the annual count. And it is very important to plan it efficiently because like you are shutting down your warehouse. So it needs to be efficient. That's why you can like plan beforehand how you want to count, which locations you want to count each day, and then uh, just make sure that those counts are going to be like efficient. And you can use some methods for cycle counting to make it even more efficient. 
And one of them, again, as an example, is the ABC analysis. So the highest priority stock items, or let's say the high value items, you can say that I want to count these like first, or I want to count them two times. So you can create plans according to that. A uh, second method can be the process control. So you might think of it that this is actually a more like a random, a subjective decision, a subjective method, but it is not. Trust me, no one knows better the warehouse than the warehouse staff. So if they tell you something like that, these are the important locations, these are the important items that need to be counted, trust them. And by uh, trusting them, you can create the plans according to like what your warehouse staff thinks. And lastly, the last method that we have is the opportunity based. So these, this method is actually triggered by a certain key event or thresholds. And what I mean by that is, let's say that you have some specific item like um, reorder quantities, or you have like minimum thresholds, you know that some locations like uh, need to be counted more frequently because you run out of items very easily there, or the items that are being sold are moving so fast that you need to make count checks every once in a while. And again, this is the opportunity-based method that you can use to plan your cycle counts. So lastly, the three quick takeaways uh, of today's presentation would be first, as we mentioned, we start off with receiving. So everything starting at the receiving point. So that's why to have a fast, accurate, and visible inventory later on, you need to make sure your receiving process is solid. Secondly, we talked about the put away algorithms. And again, as we mentioned, the most important process in the warehouse is the put away. So choosing the right logic will be an, a key point for the successful inventory management. Lastly, we talked about the counting methods and we talked about some differences. We talked about how they can be used with examples, but please also think that these can be used together. They can complement each other to make your inventory management in the most uh, optimized way. And thank you very much for listening to me today. It was great sharing this information with you and I hope you have a great weekend. Dilek, thank you very much for sharing your expertise with us um, and, and with our audience. Uh, folks, um, thank you for joining us again for this quick take. Uh, as usual, we will uh, make this available to everyone as a recording. And um, as we are heading into peak season, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to take a bit of a break uh, as we, as well as many of you are going to be very busy making sure that our customers are uh, getting through this season efficiently, effectively, uh, and with, with great success. So I do wish everyone a wonderful holiday season, a very successful peak season uh, here in the world of direct-to-consumer um, fulfillment. And uh, we will be back in one month in early December with the final quick takes of the year. And these are gonna be special events. We're going to have some special guests here to join us. So stay tuned, more information coming soon to you. Dilek again, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all. Have a great rest of your day.